bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics. This raises the question, if antibiotics are the treatment for bacterial infection, what treatment option remain when an infection of antibiotic-resistant bacteria occurs? Also, how do bacteria become resistant to antibiotics? Bacteria are able to become resistant to antibiotics partially because of the speed at which they can pass genetic material to each other. A plasmid ring of DNA from one bacterial cell that contains antibiotic-resistant genes can be transferred to another bacterial cell, allowing another bacterial cell to acquire the antibiotic resistance genes. What are the main ways bacteria become resistant to antibiotics? First, uptake of the drug can become more difficult by creating a less permeable cell wall or lower affinity for the binding site of the drug. Second, bacteria may acquire the ability to destroy the antibiotic inside the cell. For example, beta-lactam rings and some antibiotics are what make the antibiotics capable of killing bacteria. However, some bacteria acquire genes that code for beta-lactamases, which are enzymes that can degrade beta-lactams. Thus, beta-lactam ring antibiotics are degraded inside the bacteria, protecting the bacteria from the antibiotic. Third, bacteria can develop efflux pumps. These are cell membrane proteins that push antibiotics out of the cell. This creates dosage requirements too high for an antibiotic to be effective. Considering bacteria can block entry of antibiotics, degrade an antibiotic inside the cell, and remove antibiotic from the cell, how are bacterial infections to be treated? One strategy in treating antibiotic-resistant bacteria is to stop the bacteria before an antibiotic would even be needed. Antibodies are proteins produced by the immune system that bind bacteria and toxins produced by bacteria. One technique is to manufacture antibodies in a lab and give antibody injections to those infected with antibiotic-resistant bacteria. The injected antibodies would bind to the bacteria, which stops the bacteria from being able to grow colonies and bind the toxins, preventing damage to human cells. The antibodies then signal the immune system to destroy the bacteria or toxins that the antibodies are bound to, eliminating the infection. An additional benefit of antibody treatment is that, since antibodies are not antibiotics, antibodies cannot cause bacteria to develop resistance to antibiotics. Another treatment option is to fight the resistance mechanisms of the bacteria while also providing an antibiotic. Combination therapies are therapies for bacterial infections that involve adding ligand proteins for bacterial enzymes in addition to the antibiotics. For example, providing a ligand, meaning a protein that will bind to a bacterial enzyme such as a beta-lactamase, would cause the beta-lactamase to be bound to the ligand protein instead of the antibiotic. This would render the beta-lactamase ineffective, increasing the killing power of the antibiotics that contain beta-lactam rings. Similarly, combination therapies have been able to fight the effect of the efflux pump. A ligand can be provided for the efflux pump to push out of the cell instead of the antibiotic. This has led to a high enough concentration of the antibiotic in the bacterial cell that the antibiotic is once again effective at killing the bacteria. Another treatment involves fighting bacterial infections by infecting the bacteria themselves. Bacteriophages are viruses that infect bacteria. Lytic bacteriophages are viruses that can kill bacteria by causing the lysis or bursting open of bacterial cells and ending the infection. Despite its effectiveness, this strategy can also stimulate bacteria to grow resistance to the bacteriophage and could possibly accelerate the process of bacterial resistance. Lastly, disrupting the cell wall through injections of metal nanoparticles can allow more antibiotic to enter the bacterial cell or the nanoparticles alone can damage the bacteria severely enough to kill the bacteria. Prevention of infection has also been promoted. The human microbiome is the site of good bacteria in the human digestive tract that helps with digestion. Keeping a healthy microbiome can help prevent bacterial infections partially by not providing enough room for dangerous bacteria to grow. Additionally, some of the same foods used for a healthy microbiome are also beneficial for cells of the immune system. While there is currently no single treatment for all bacteria, significant gains have been made in treatment options. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to our channel for the latest video on the science of human physiology.